Today um, we have uh, Munia uh, Lasiri from Morocco. Um, so she will tell us about uh, how to uh, identify and discriminate uh, gammas for from neutrons and nuclear reactors. Um, she has also been working to uh, develop uh, the Instagram and Twitter community for for ASP and. Uh, to motivate our our young folks, uh, young physicists, uh, um, to join that effort online and make it really dynamic. Um, so, so she will start by by uh, by talking about that first, and then she will move on to uh, the physics part. So, Monia, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, and thank you for uh, taking time to connect with us today. And uh, thank, uh, thank you, ESP committee, to, uh, to give me this opportunity to talk about my nuclear research and also to talk about the uh, ESP alumni community. So, um, uh, as you know, we, uh, we have decided to, to start using uh, the social media, especially Instagram and uh, Twitter, uh, to create uh, uh, an ESP alumni community. So uh, our goal is to inspire and influence young uh, African students to study physics and related fields and uh, to consider this is, uh, as a, a scientific uh, uh, area. So the idea is uh, to send us a short bio of yourself and a few pictures during your scientific research uh, I'm thinking about something that to retrace uh, a bit your education and uh, until what you are doing now, passing by the African School of the Physics. Uh, and uh, also, if uh, yeah, you know that uh, people would be interested in your uh, academic journey, it should be uh, centered on the physics, but in a historical narrative of your personal development as a physicist. So, and also, if you can translate your bio air in your native language, it should be uh, awesome. And the last thing, uh, thing, please send us an advice or a code that stuck with you. So here we're going to answer the same question as the ESP online uh, seminar, where we are, uh, we are now, and what happened to us after we attended the African School of the Physics. Uh, the first, the first uh, post was uh, dedicated to ESP uh, committee. So if you want to learn more about them, please visit our community on Instagram and on Twitter. So yeah, we are thinking to post uh, three of your uh, stories per week. So uh, please send us your uh, short bio as soon as possible. Uh, we need your assistance. So after we posted 10 of your uh, stories, uh, uh, we're gonna host uh, uh, Ask Alumni, yes, Ask ESP Alumni Anything, eight of the fourth hour. Here we will invite one of the 10 posted alumni and we will discuss anything related to the physics. So it will be on Instagram live. And before this session, we will uh, post a, a question, is, uh, sorry. And then we will select a few uh, questions to respond to. So last thing, uh, please uh, jo uh, join us on Instagram and on Twitter. And if you have any comments or uh, suge suggestion, please uh, reach out to me via ESP alumni community. Thank you and looking forward to getting to know you. Thank you, uh, Monia. So uh, you. we encourage uh, people who have not done this yet uh, to join this community. We would like to uh, out of this community uh, develop a very strong um, um, young African physicist uh, forum and, and chapter, um, ultimately to be a part of uh, the African Physical Society. We want to make uh, that chapter really very strong um, in the sense that uh, we would like you, uh, the young African physicists, uh, to become very self-organized and and then uh, discussing issues uh, related to your professional development and and how we uh, senior scientists can help you better and uh, you know so i think it's extremely important and and you guys should really feel concerned and get involved and make sure that uh, you really participate to try to make uh, this into 
a very strong community of young African physicists. So that's the ultimate objective. So please, uh, please uh, send Munia the information that uh, that she requested, and uh, join this community, uh, this community on Twitter and and on Instagram, and start participating to make it uh, into a very very strong uh, uh, forum and uh, strong organization ultimately. Yeah. All right, so uh, Munia, we can now go to your. Uh, okay, you know, I'm gonna stop sharing this slides. Okay. So yeah, uh, now I'm gonna talk about uh, my uh, my nuclear work, and uh, in order to avoid the internet uh, bandwidth uh, connection and I'm gonna issues, I'm gonna turn off my webcam video. So if at any point if you don't see my slides or hear my voice, please let me know by sending me a message. So yeah. Uh, so to begin with, uh, I was born in Morocco. This is where I was raised in Sali. Sali is the twin city of the Moroccan capital of Rabat, lying just across the, the river Borgreg. Yeah, the Kingdom of Morocco is a beautiful country in Western North Africa with coastlines on uh, the Atlantic Ocean and Mediterranean Sea. So our country has a unique mix of Arab, Berber, African and European culture influences. Here a nice map of, uh, of Africa with some touch of physics showing the previous editions of the African School of Physics. This, uh, this map taken from uh, an article on the African School of Physics. Uh, this one building up the African physics community by Meredith Forey. So I added here also the two upcoming editions, the ESP 2022, uh, uh, which will be held in South Africa and ESP 2024 in Morocco, inshallah, God willing. So yeah, become a physicist. I received a bachelor's degree in fundamental studies, uh, science of the physical matter. My bachelor's thesis focused on ionizing radiation and radio protection under guidance of Professor Raja Sharqawi Al Morsili. After that, I received a master's degree in security of computer networks and embedded systems, Securize. So yeah, I have worked with Dr. Uh, Al Mehdi Al Hamzawi from Kniston National Center of Nuclear uh, Nuclear Energy Sciences and Technique. Uh, he also he is also attending this talk. So thank you, Professor, for your endless support. Yeah, where I was especially focusing on developing of wavelet based tools for processing and characterizing the gamma ray spectrometry. After that, I started my PhD in physics and nuclear instrumentation in uh, 2014. Uh, I also felt like a, like a dream that come true since I was a high school student. I had been fascinated by physics and more particularly by the idea that physics would lead me to more uh, to fundamental understanding of uh, nature. So yeah, April 1st, I defended my PhD thesis. So I did my, my PhD research work with the science team of matter and radiation, ISMAR, in Rabat, in collaboration with Kniston National Center for Nuclear Energy Sciences and Technology and Technique. So yeah, uh, I did my PhD work under guidance of Professor Raja Sharqawi Al Morsili from Muhammad V University and Dr. Al Mehdi Al Hamzawi from Kniston. So there, my PhD thesis focused on uh, the application of non-negative tensor factorization algorithms to extract independent copments from signal recorded at the fission chamber preamplifiers outputs in order to achieve neutron gamma discrimination. So yeah, all my degrees received from Mohammed V University in Rabat. Uh, this picture, this is me. Uh, this picture is taken uh, inside our Ismar lab. And the picture on the button uh, is when I defended my PhD thesis. And you can see here my, super, my PhD supervisors, Professor Sharqawi and uh, Dr. Hamzawi. 
uh, the head of our laboratory, uh, Professor Tayalati, and some of our lab members. So yeah, um, you know already Dr. Uh, Dr. KTV, who was my thesis uh, referee. Uh, Dr. Latifa Lwodghiri, she was my thesis president. And also you can see here Dr. Uh, Steve, Dr. Herman, uh, he, was, uh, he is also attending this talk, Dr. Mazzini, uh, Dr. Uh, Host. Yeah, I was, I was uh, so lucky because most of the ESP committee attended my PhD defense because at this time, the ESP International Organizing Committee programmed a seat visit to Morocco. So yeah, as uh, KTV said already, I was part of the ESP 2016. I attended the, the African School of Physics in Kigali, Rwanda in uh, 2016. Um, first, and to be honest, I was not excited to travel to Rwanda because I thought it is a dangerous place. Also, I was afraid of the yellow fever. So after several days of thinking, I decided to go. Yeah, traveling to Kigali from Morocco is not easy as there is no direct flights. So the organizers, book as a flight me and three other students from Morocco with a transit in Qatar. We spent one night in Doha in very beautiful hotel before taking the second flight to Kigali. So, we, so when we arrived there, I mean in Kigali, two, we were two men from our hotel waiting for us. And then we were so surprised about everything happening the city, the hotel, the food, and more than 75 participants from different African countries. So yeah, contrary to what I thought before, Kigali, Rwanda was safe and very, very beautiful. Also, the level and diversity of discussion were outstanding, a very good and diverse set of speakers and high array of participants. It was a great experience for of us to be able to share our work with the researcher from the globe receive and get inspired by great idea from others. I, I personally feel it is a great chance to meet Dr. KTV and the ESP members from all over the world. Yeah, this school means a lot of, for my PhD journey and be, because of it, I am who I am now. So yeah, after, I, after my PhD, I was offered an internship at Brookhaven National Laboratory. I was uh, doing a Monte Carlo modeling of a nuclear reactor core using the GEOM4 framework in collaboration with the group of the Professor Simon from University of Johannesburg, South Africa. And I, also, I was also dedicated to a project related to con construct a dedicated system to calibrate the field response functions for the wire readout based signal phase liquid argon time projection chamber. So during my academic journey at Brookhaven Lab, lab I was participate in several meetings and conferences, uh, DPF, uh, the American Physical Society Division of Particles and Fields meeting. I, I was uh, actually presenting on behalf of the, uh, of the ESP, International Organizing Community, the African School of Physics. So this article was published on the archive physics and education. So after my talk, I was surprised by this illustration by Savannah from University of California. So it, it was like uh, a nice surprise. Also, I attended the, I attended the uh, particle physics and cosmology uh, at Brookhaven Lab. I also participated to the National Society of Black Physicists Conference in which I present my uh, research work. I had also uh, the chance to give a similar talk uh, uh, on behalf of Ubuntu Reactors team at Brookhaven National Laboratory, Nuclear Science and Technology Department. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful to the scientists that developed this program and enabled me to get experience uh, at Brookhaven Lab. So here, uh, here are a few memories from ESP 2016. So yeah, this picture on the top, uh, this is me, and this is my uh, best friend, Sana. We were fortunate to have put of us activities in this school. Yeah, the picture on the, on the bottom, uh, on the middle, uh, right, taken during our, uh, our execution to Lac Kivu. 
Yeah, and the picture on the button, I saw it from Anne's Instagram. So yeah, this is Anna, this is me. This is uh, our Kenya friend, Anne, and our uh, fasty Zambian friend, George. Yeah, and the picture on the left uh, is the group picture taken at the last day of the school. So here's Sister Mary, uh, Mustafa and Hiba from Egypt, uh, Davis from uh, Cameroon, uh, Paul from uh, uh, Rwanda. So it, it was a great experience to meet more than 75 friends. Yeah, all work and no fun can get boring to as KTV said. So here, uh, uh, during our uh, academic journey at, uh, at uh, Brookhaven Lab, Dr. Bishai and Dr. KTV hosted several parties, dinners for us uh, at their homes. Also, PNL hosted a welcome reception and we had the chance to cook some of our favorite ethnic dishes. It was a nice occasion to try many types of African food. Also, we enjoyed some activities like uh, painting, hiking, bowling. I was, I was lucky enough to meet some of ESP alumni from different editions. Bina from ESP 2010, the first edition. Diallo from the ESP 2012. Hiba. Uh, Azoti, mother of twin, and Christel, the, the newest uh, doctor in ESP town. Uh, we, they were in the same patch with me, ESP 2016. Here, Hasna uh, Fumi, Eves, and Raymond from ESP 2011. I know Hasna before she's my Ismar lab colleague, and Ameni was so, uh, supposed to be ESP 2020. So now let's talk now about some of my nuclear work. Uh, this part is uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, my PhD. The first part will be dedicated to my PhD work. So yeah, as you know, for efficient exploitation of res research reactors, it is important to discern neutron flux uh, uh, distribution inside it with the best possible precision. So for this reason, Fission chambers are used to detect and measure the neutron fluon rates over the exposure time. I mean, neutron flux monitoring. However, with neutrons, gamma rays are also emitted by nuclei and detected by fission chambers. So a fission chamber is designed to process it in three different modes, depending on neutron flux level and the externally coupled electronic devices, pulse mode, coupling mode, and current mode. Usually, it is possible to discriminate neutrons and gamma ray particles when the chamber works in pulse or coupling mode. However, when the chamber works in current mode, the gamma ray contribution can be important, typically between 1 and 10% of the signal, and cannot, cannot usually be surprised or discriminated against. Here, a proposed method called non-negative tensor factorization algorithms resolve these issues without any a priori information about the manner of their mixture inside the chamber and under in your neutron flux range. So I will get back into this method in more detail later. So now let's move to describe uh, the materials and methods used in this research work. So a fission chamber is widely used to detect in core and X-core neutron flux. Here, a schematic sketch of the fission chamber, which is a sample generic ionization chamber with a small amount of fissile deposit lies on at least one of the electrodes. So in our case study on the anode one, in order to detect neutron flux. So when neutron reaches the fissile deposit, deposit it is likely to induce a fission reaction that generates usually two fission products or fission fragments emitted in two nearly opposite directions. So the fission fragments emitted out ionize the filling gas on extrajectory and generate a high number of electron and positive ions. Here in our case, argon plus and electron. So when a voltage of a few hundred volts applied between these two electrodes, the electron and positive ion are separate and drift towards the, the anode and the cathode respectively. So the drift uh, of uh, put charge induces a current signal that can be amplified and processed. 
So yeah, for uh, some reasons of nuclear safety inside our Moroccan Trega Mark II reactor, we decided here to simulate our fission chamber by interfacing two simulation talkies, Geon4 and Garfield++. Geon4 is used to simulate the interactions and passes of particle through matter, and Garfield++ is used for the simulation of particle detectors that use a gas mixture or a semiconductor material as a sensitive medium. So here we have created an interface between Geon4 and Garfield++ in part for the simulation of our electrical signal. So thus, the main parts of a gas detector simulation program are primary high energy particle ionization, forming of ionization clusters in gas uh, via head software, electron and ion drift properties in electric and magnetic fields via Magbolt software, amplification creation of additional ionization via avalanche, and finally, forming of electric signal at readout. Here, Geon4 is able to simulate only the first process. So for the last four processes, the user must provide either here own code or can use an existing software package like Garfield++. We use it Garfield++ in our simulation because of its predictive power of optimizing drift properties of electrons and ions through the gas volume and calculating the end usage signal. The slide here describes a way to create an interface between Geon4 and Garfield++ in part for the simulation of our uh, fission chamber, WL7657. So we did also a route for data analysis and visualization. Uh, so here, the physics parameterization uh, features in geon 4 offers the easiest way to interface between Geon4 and Garfield++. So the general idea of parameterization is to create a region where the user can, can provide his or his own implementation of the physics and detector response, and then create a new class uh, derived from G4V fast simulation model and attach it, it to the region. In the physics uh, physic list of the program, uh, G4 G4 fast simulation manager process has to be created. So this G4 V fast um, simulation manager process is the physics process of the parameterization, and it serves as a, an interface between Geo4 tracking and the user parameterization. And uh, and also now uh, Geo4 part is ready. And Garfield++ part is contained in the do it method of the Garfield model. And finally, to compile and link between these uh, two toolkits, the CMIC list uh, has to be modified by adding the Garfield++ libraries. Of course, to do that, we need first to know our the technical characteristics of our chamber, which are given in the table on the right. And the, the, the neutral gamma radiation source used in our simulation study was Californium 252. Here, the energy deposited by particle interacting uh, with uh, the ionization gas uh, was simulated also during our simulation. So this figure shows the results of our simulation. The horizontal axis uh, is the energy deposited in ionization of each particle that enters the active gas volume. So this energy will contribute to the creation of electron-ion pairs. So the electron-ion pairs are implemented through the main number of ions along the method of the G4 electron-ion pair class uh, for each step of the primary and secondary particles. So this class is used to sample ionization cluster in gases or silicon detectors. Also in our simulation, simulation case, the range cut off is set to one micrometer and the low energy limit is set to 26.53 EV, which is the weighted average of the ionization potential of argon and nitrogen. So as you know, the electric signal created by a particle interacting in the gas depends on its energy and thus on the number of electron ion pair created. 
So the slide here shows the electric signal generated by our chamber WL7657, which is directly proportional to the neutron flux and can be used for fast identification and selection of radiation particles. Our electric signals show a strong agreement with the true uh, grow through uh, spe spectrum fig on the right. The slide here summarizes the steps which will be forward in this uh, in this PhD work. So the output signals of our simulated fission chamber preamplifiers with Californium 252 source will be considered as observations. So these observations will be processed by using NTF algorithm, non-negative tensor factorization algorithm, to extract independent complements, which will be characterized later in order to reach our discrimination goal. So the first part uh, was done via Geon4 Garfield++ interface, and the second uh, part uh, done via NTF lab toolbox and their MATLAB. So yeah, as, uh, as uh, mentioned before, the motivation of this work is to apply tensor-based blind source separation methods, BSS, as a new digital method to extract usable neutron signals from recorded mixture and thus to obtain clearer neutron flux spectrum. So here, the non-negative tensor factorization algorithm is, provides the state of the art multi canal blind source separation. It is a generalization of non-negative matrix factorization, NMF. They have directional information, I mean, that can be derived from the results of the NTF. Also, NTF take advantage of multi-channel. So as you know, a tensor is a generalization of scalar, vector, and matrix. So yeah, matrix is a second order tensor, and vector is one order tensor. So as you can see here, a 3D Y tensor represented here as a cube. This model extracts two command factors, a uh, basis mixing matrix A and unknown complements represented by a matrix X. Following this formula. So in our application, Y is uh, formed by the fission chamber preamplifiers output signals. E it represents the mixing matrix, and X is a no matrix of independent complements to be estimated. So, in fact, NTF Lab Toolbox contains a large collection of algorithms. So, in order to define the best ones able to analyze our mixture data, we calculated here the performance index of separability, which is given by the following formula. Then, we classified our algorithm according to the, their lowest PI values. In general, a PI around 10 minus one provide a good performance in terms of separability. So uh, the, before apply PSS method in our tensor uh, case, this, this table shows that uh, the NTF Two algorithm is the most effective one among all stable NMF NTF algorithms and have a good performance in terms of separability than NF1. So in order to evaluate the effectiveness of this algorithm, we plot her signal to interference ratio SIR of individual columns of the estimated mixing matrix. So this plot shows that two independent complements ICs are, are the dominant, the first one and the second one, since their SIR values are very high. So these two sources might correspond to neutral and gamma ray particles. And also here, the obtained mean is a, is a IR is very high, as you can see here. So, uh, and, uh, and the figure on the, uh, on the top, it shows the source recovered by the application of NTF2 algorithm in which the non-negative depend two hidden complements or sources are collected in one slice. So the obtained time plot shows that the first plot might correspond to neutron signal and the second one might correspond to the gamma one. So in order to characterize these two estimated source, we computed here the normalized correlation between each one of them 
and the recorded signals corresponding to pure neutron and pure gamma ray. So the blue line here uh, represents the normalized correlation between neutron signal and the first independent complement, and the red line here represents the normalized correlation between the neutron signal and the second independent complement. So this, this uh, figure shows that neutron signal is strongly correlated with the first extracted independent complement. Same for the gamma array uh, uh, signals. We find here that the gamma array signal is very correlated with the second estimated independent complement. So yeah, uh, because we find that NTF2 is the most robust and flexible algorithm able to analyze our mixture data, here the last part of this, this uh, PhD work describe the performance of the application of this algorithm to extract uh, independent complement from the resulting pulses simulated either by GEO4, Graphit++, or by, uh, by BFC. Uh, Byton based simulation of fission chambers and the validation of the results through the comparison of normalized cross correlation function. So, BFC or Byton based simulation of fission chambers is, as illustrated in this figure, is a code suite implemented by Byton. It is built around five models. BFC, TRIM, BOLSIG, INPUT, and MIN. So the plot on the right shows the electrical signals generated by BFC. So this plot shows a strong agreement with our electrical signal simulated by Geon4 Garfield++. The plot of the signal to interference ratio is IR of individual columns of the mixing matrix E from put geo 4 graphite plus plus or by bfc outputs shows that only two independent complements are dominant in put simulation cases the first one second one in the case of geo 4 graphite plus plus and the first one and the third one in the case of bfc so yeah uh, our investigation aimed to find if there is any relationship between uh, the estimated sources in put simulation cases, I mean Geon4 Graphite++ and BFC. So for this reasons, we have calculated here the normalized correlation, cross correlation between first and second estimated independent complements in the case of Geon4 Graphite++ and the first and the fourth extracted independent complement in the case of BFC. So this figure show here a strong correlation exists between the first uh, estimated independent complement in the case of Geon4 Graphite++ and the first estimated independent complement in the case of BFC. And here we find that the second, uh, the second GF, uh, GEO4, estimated GEO4 Garfield++ plus plus is very correlated with the fourth estimated independent complement in the case of BFC. So yeah, uh, consequently, the application of NTF algorithm distinguish neutral and gamma rays with highly qualified discrimination and without any a priori information about the manner of their mixture inside the chamber and under any neutron flux range. So now uh, uh, let's move to the next part of this simulation. So, you know, in Africa, we have a world that is Ubuntu. Ubuntu means that people are on community and they can work together. So for us, we would like to see Ubuntu reactor Ubuntu simulation. And to do this with only one open source, allow anyone to get involved in, in making the understanding of nuclear reactors. You know, MCNP and Serpent are better known codes in this context, but it should be noted that MCNP and Serpent are not open source codes. Now we're gonna introduce a third option, Geon4. However, you know that Geon4 was not developed for nuclear reactors, as you know, but it was developed for particle physics. But Geon4 promises to be a significant additional coding framework. So this figure here show the papers being published involving nuclear reactor and Geon4 over the last decade. So as you can see here, the growth is slight as is the average citation rate of each article, uh, only 
point seventy six citation per item. So uh, as you as uh, as you can see here, the 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 the, the article uh, the this uh, this figure show a uh, peak in two thousand seventeen. Uh, and starting to decline for uh, 2017 to 2020 with a slight increase in uh, 2019. And more active teams uh, in this topic are ES uh, ESD, the accelerator driving system, fast neutron stud use, G4 SORC, G4 stochastic reactor kinetics, CNL Geon4 Canadian nuclear laboratories, uh, and criticality stud use. So yeah, this, this part uh, presents several results that establish the proof of principle in the stochastic Monte Carlo modeling of a nuclear reactor core using the GEOM4 framework. So our simulation is exercised in the context of a high temperature gas cold reactor, STGCR, that used helium as a colon and graphite as a moderator. In addition, uh, the HTGCR used fuel bubble use fuel bubble composed a large amount of triso particle, tristructural isotropic particle, which are embodied within a spherical graphite uh, matrix. So the triso particle innermost sphere is a canal of uranium dioxide surrounded by four layers, namely the porous carbon, inner pyrocarbon, silicon carbide, other pyrocarbon. So what is happening in GEOM4 in the meantime? You can see here the list of all uh, of the download you must make. So GEOM4 have been, uh, has been previously used to look at several aspects that build the capacity of general neutronics code after the development of the native GEOM4 format for nuclear data libraries, g 4 ntl and g 4 tntl You know that GEOM4 has a modern C++ modular ar uh, artic uh, architecture. It is multi-treated and trivially parallel on multiple nodes. The well-documented source is already available. So rather than being input car driven, the user modifies and extends the class structure. So now if we want Geon4 to modulate our reactor, we must introduce a new physics because we want Geon4 to do a certain job. So if we want to look at one bubble here, we want to give this bubble a boundary condition. This boundary condition was modulated with the reflection considering an adjustable albedo as a new Geon4 class. Also later, we introduce a new physics class to do nuanced treatment particle inventory for end of time at global wall clock time slot. And then we will modify how Geon4 proprieties decay VS killing of particles in order to capture history snapshot at end of time slide accurately. So this figure here shows the basic simulation structure. There are two different codes running in parallel, a thermal transport code and a Geon4 code. Thermal transport code here calculates calculates the transfer of heat between each part of the reactor, such as bubbles, colon, and the walls. And Garfield++ plus plus here uh, model all the particle reaction, including ne neutron transport, nuclear reactions, fission and decay events, fission fragments, and gamma ray and their reactions. So at, end, geo, uh, at the end uh, of the time step, geo for Tally, uh, tallies a 3D map of all energy deposits discreted into terminal transport codes, MISH, and send it to, G, uh, to terminal transport code. In return, thermal transport code sent to Geon4 a 3D map of the lattice temperature for the purpose, colon, and wall, and density information of the colon. So this information is used to update the density temperature of the geo for materials information. So each could then perform another step and the, uh, the process repeats. So here the list of all the physics, uh, accurate simulation of fission, uh, fission accurate uh, simulation of neutron capture, 
other reactions like uh, inelastic scattering, fast and thermal neutron tracking, neutron decay, fission uh, fragments, and finally, modeling of energy deposition from gamma, electron, and positron, etc. So this, this figure here still requires some development from us. So, so yeah, our, our simulation is not yet advanced enough to fully flow a nuclear reactor. So the next slide uh, slides here serve to provide this, uh, select results of proof of concept that the simulation is starting to capture important aspects that will be required of the eventual project. So here, a simulation of one, centim uh, one meter cylinder with radius nine centimeters surrounded by one centimeter graphite wall was created uh, as shown in this uh, this part so this uh, the, the simulation contains 80 bubbles in a hexagonal closed packet configuration the temperature uh, gradient was set up according to the following formula and the density of the column was calculated assuming constant pressure as uh, inversely proportional to temperature so here an uh, XZ slice uh, through the density and the temperature uh, along the uh, in the Z direction along the, the the along the we find that along the Z direction the the length of the cylinder uh, show that uh, that this uh, in, uh, that this temperature increase in the X direction ranging from a minimum of 300 Kelvin to a maximum of 1200 Kelvin. So the temperature here uh, described into a rectangular uh, grid uh, with the voxel size of 0 0.5 centimeter. So a series of neutrons were the, then fired into a patch. Uh, here and the, the figure on the top and on the bottom. So the first patch was from a bubble with a low Z position, close to the 300 Kelvin side. And the second one was from height that bubble close to one uh, to the 1,200 Kelvin side. So each neutron starts off with an energy of two uh, MeV, which is in the range of typical energies of from neutrons from fission events. So and the probability that neutron reflects of the other boundary was set to 99%. So yeah, the visualization. Uh, to visualize uh, to visualize the thermalization of the neutrons, a graph uh, was created that stored the energy and time of each interaction that alerts uh, the neutrons' energy. One can therefore track the change of energy of each neutron with time. So two uh, such graphs are shown here. So each event is fired uh, two uh, milliseconds after the end of the pre uh, previous event. So, of course, uh, the most important output for our simulation is the energy deposit map, as this is uh, the input into the thermal transport code. Here, uh, 50 k uh, two, uh, 2 MeV neutrons were uh, fired at random direction from random bubbles. So, yeah, the map of energy deposit within bubble show in X z side for y equals zero the energy deposit will also depend on temperature through the doppler protein of the resonance reaction dominated by high energy events such as fission and neutron capture it appears uh, as it uh, if the low z and low temperature bubbles have more high energy deposit than the high z bubbles so yeah this is can be confirmed by graphing the total energy deposit per bubble as a function of the average temperature within each bubble. So this, this is graphed uh, in the first fig on the top. Uh, there is a clear pattern here showing that low, uh, lower temperature bubble are more likely to absorb energy than higher temperature bubble. So yeah, similar gra graphs can be obtained for the number of neutron capture events per bubble and fission per bubble. These are shown in the figures on the button. So neutron capture on the left one and the uh, fission on the right. 
So as you can see here, the temperature dependence uh, neutron capture is less marker than that of fission. So this slide here show us a list of all nuclei uh, created uh, were created during our simulation and presented at the end of the time slice. A total here of 40 k, uh, 40 k nuclei were created, falling into 16 unique isotope. Uh, uh, each uh, of these were stable and it uh, were unstable. Okay, okay. So the the last slide here shows the number of neutrons uh, at the end of the time slide, the uh, blue line here, and the neutron created during time slide, and also the prompt cr uh, criticality calculated for each time slide. So all neutrons were prompt as the simulation did not include delighted neutrons. So this figure shows how the neutron population grows at low temperatures, then start to shrink at four uh, at higher temperature. So based on a comparison between the change in the number of neutrons in each time slide and the criticality, which is calculated depending on, uh, on, the, on the number of parents and daughters, each two millisecond time slide corresponds to an average of 1.51 neutron genera uh, generation. So yeah, the overall conclusion. In the first part, uh, I, knew, I mean, in uh, my PhD work, a new digital approach was introduced to discriminate between neutron and gamma ray parses recorded in a mixture environment. The obtained results show that our mixture signal observation are formed by two independent copments, which we characterize it by using either correlation time domain or by using power spectral density uh, frequency domain. I didn't mention, uh, mention in this talk the power spectral density uh, part. And also the verification of the cultural, the comparison, uh, comparison with the results of PFC. Uh, for the next part, I mean the reactor simulation by using GEO4, many, uh, many features of the reactor was simulated by using GEO4, uh, such as time slicing and adaptation of GEO4 for correct uh, persistence, uh, energy depositions, uh, fission fragments, historic, criticality, core follow. So, in fact, the aim of this project, I mean the next, uh, the next project, the reactor simulation, is to simulate an open source reactor code to that lower the barrier to participants by universities to get involved in making the understanding of reactor transport. So, so thank you so much for your. Um, Monia, thanks a lot for this presentation. So um, I would like to invite uh, questions and, and comments. <clears throat> um, you can either speak out or you can write in the chat. So here, all questions or comments are, are welcome. So people shouldn't feel shy. So I see a hand raised. Um, so Bina, go ahead. Bina, can you hear us? We cannot hear you. Hello, Katevi, can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I don't have a question. Uh, I just have a general comment. And uh, I just want to thank Munya for this nice uh, presentation and uh, for the work that the entire collaboration is doing. So Munya and the collaboration, uh, this is a pretty good job. And we can't wait to, to see the final simulation of the, the, the reactor. So I was quite particularly uh, impressed with uh, uh, the choice of uh, the source uh, for these uh, neutrons, uh, which is California 252. So you have high spontaneous uh, 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 neutrons, which are produced using this source. So this is pretty uh, good choice. And uh, I actually remember when uh, uh, I was working with uh, the development of uh, the larger acceptance smart paper spectrometer, uh, uh, in South Korea for the round accelerator facility. Uh, this was our first choice. So yeah, and um, it gave us at least a very good yield of neutrons. 
Um, and the, the results, the experimental results were quite fascinating. And this actually made me so motivated when I looked at the uh, simulated spectrum uh, using uh, Gen4. So actually, yeah, the, this is, uh, 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 this research is uh, in, the, in the right direction and I can't just wait to see the, uh, the final simulation of uh, uh, this reactor. So yeah, just thank the entire collaboration and, and Monia for this uh, pretty good job. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Bina. Other questions or comments? Yes, Kof, I have a question. Yes. Um, okay, please, Kof. Yes, uh, 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 please go ahead, Ebode. Yes, Kof. Uh, please, Munya, for uh, while, while you, you, you was running the, your, code, your code in order to get the result with GN4, Please, how many times the code is, was running, for example? And also, how many events that you have taken for your, for your code? Yeah, uh, thank you for your question. For, for the event, we, we were running around the, uh, 80 uh, K neutron with the two MAV. And the, the simulation took uh, like uh, for uh, uh, took like uh, two to three days for uh, give us uh, our uh, this uh, the results of this uh, part. In this case, please, uh, what's the what 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 was what were the parameters that you wanted to get in your code? Uh, you mean in the reactor part simulation, right? Yes, the parameter, for example, the we, okay, we, position. Uh, yes, go uh, ahead. We are, we are looking for the neutron generalization, the criticality, and the fission uh, fragments. And the first, uh, uh, the first oh, okay. uh, parameter is the energy deposition by the, by the neutron. Have you already studied also the solid yeah, particle? Sorry? Have you already studied in your code the secondary particle generated? I can't hear you well. Have you already studied also in your code the secondary particle generated in your code? Uh, yeah, yeah, we did. Well, uh, Fabian, you know answer, yourself yeah. that uh, in Gen4, once you have the primary particles, it's going to follow all of the secondary particles until you know, some threshold, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, other questions or comments? Um, Munia, could you go back to the slides where you show the energy uh, distribution, the energy deposited by the neutrons? Uh, uh, you know, I think it's earlier, either page 11 or page 13. Uh, okay, first part. Okay. Yeah, the first part, yeah. Mm. I was going to write the page number down, but I... Uh, uh, can, you see, can you see my slide? Because I... Yeah, it's, yeah we can see, yeah, uh, but yeah, go to, I think it's uh, either page 11 or 13. Yeah, You're uh, on page 5 right now. Turn, 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 turn. Yeah, yeah, it's... Uh, Go, yeah. No, go back, go back. You, yeah, yeah. No, go forward one. Forward one. Okay. Uh, here, could you explain this a little bit? You see that uh, kink over there around one MeV um, in the first. Uh, uh, one one uh, KIV, KIV. Yeah. Could you explain yeah. this distribution a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, in our simulation, the core of uh, heat is a photo absorption ionization PI model. So the heat is used to propagate all ionization electrons with a kinetic energy of a few keV and lower as the delta electrons. So the lower uh, electron energy limit here is one keV. Okay, so could you also trans uh, explain how you convert the energy deposited into a number of uh, electron ion pair or vice versa? Yeah, we use we use uh, here we we use this energy deposition to create the electron ion pair 
uh, we use the, the main number of ion, uh, ions along step uh, method of the G4 electron ion pair class for the creation of the number of electron ion, pair, ion pairs. Oh, uh, thank you. There, I think there's who else has a uh, okay, um, David. Yeah. Would you please ask yeah. your question or comment? Yeah. So, uh, that's a wonderful pre presentation. I'm interested in Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, can anyone on this platform help me through the platform? I mean, through this uh, Monte Carlo simulation? Um, could you uh, explain clearly what what do you exactly need uh, in Monte Carlo simulation? Yeah, I'm trying to investigate the uh, impact of a trace element inside tissues, inside their tissue composition. So I want to use a Monte Carlo simulation for the simulation of the tissues and the energy dose distribution. Okay. Um, that's very good. Jayant for that Munya has described in this talk has been uh, used uh, quite extensively for uh, medical applications. Um, I think, as she said, um, you know, is the whole purpose is uh, to simulate the the, the um, particle um, transport uh, through matter using all the known physics uh, yeah. that that we know, right? So. So you can certainly investigate uh, Jayan 4 um, to see whether the, it can be applicable in the, in uh, the the regime that that you are interested in. But it has been used already quite extensively for a wide a wide range of medical applications. Okay. So what exactly do you look, need look uh, from Monia, for example? Munia, you had a comment or something, sorry. Uh, I think that uh, uh, if uh, he uses uh, Fluka, it will be good for the nuclear, uh, for the medical, uh, uh, for the medical simulation. So um, are you aware of Fluka, David? Uh, David, we cannot hear you. All right, while David comes back, Munia, could you go to um, um, when you apply the, um, you know, the, 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 the separation with uh, the tensor decomposition, you have a, uh, um, yeah, I will, uh, no, this one is fine, but um, the the different uh, components that you showed with the color bars, yeah, no, that previous one. Is this I think one? It's the previous page. I think it's page nineteen, maybe. Nineteen. Right. Okay. Could you explain these plots for us I and and know. what are the different <laughs> colors representing and what are the the four sets of uh, columns or even there are five of them here? Could you? Could you spend a moment to explain this for us? Okay. So here, uh, here we calculated the signal to interference ratio. I mean the mixing matrix of our uh, of our uh, algorithm. So here, because uh, we have uh, five colors here, because because we have five slices, uh, we use a tensor uh, decomposition. So we have five observation, and each observation contains five, uh, uh, we have five slides and uh, each slide have uh, five uh, observations. So five observation processes, uh, processes are at once and each, uh, uh, each slide represents five, uh, five uh, uh, observations. So five by five, uh, 25. Here, uh, th this is uh, why I ha we have here five. Because we have uh, here a uh, matrix uh, tensor, a tensor. Very good, very good. Um, now, uh, could you go to the um, the correlation with uh, um, the the components? Yes, exactly here. Um, so, could you explain um, a little bit? Uh, you said that uh, 
the first slides or correspond to uh, is, is well correlated to a neutrons and then later on you yeah. said that the other one to gamma so, so yeah. here here the estimated sources uh, after the application of ntf2 algorithms so we find head here two hidden components or sources are collected in one slice okay so the first one we think it it, it will be the neutron signal and the second one it, it will be the the gamma one so to to confirm this this uh, this uh, this uh, we we're gonna plot here the normalized the normalized correlation between these two estimated sources and the normalized uh, and the the uh, the pure signal of neutron and gamma rise so here uh, is here uh, in the figure on the left uh, shows the normalized correlation between these two extraction in independent complements and the pure neutron signal. So uh, here uh, we find that the neutron signal is very correlated with the, the first independent complement, this one. And the same for the gamma ray part, we find that the, the second estimated uh, comp uh, component uh, ICs is very correlated with the gamma uh, gamma pure signal. Okay, um, very good. Could you go back to page number eighteen? Uh, other people, anybody? Christine? Oh, Christine, you have a you have a comment, please. Uh, sorry, uh, go ahead. And maybe because David is back online, and this is a bit related to to your question, David. So. I think that maybe we can take him first. Uh, David, the, the question, I'm not sure if you heard what Ketavi was proposing as well for the, the Fluka. Can we have maybe David speaking first? I don't see David here in the list of his team. Okay, so it's just in the comment. Okay, so it's a bit related to that. So this is an excellent yeah. presentation. Can you hear me? Voila, please go ahead, yeah. We can hear you. Hello. Yes, we, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes. Yeah, we can hear yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. I'm. 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 What I wanted to use a Monte Carlo simulation. To which which uh, which Monte Carlo simulation? You mean I'm using, I'm or using, I want or? to use Monte Carlo simulation. Which one? Exactly. The effect of tissue composition. Yeah. So, so you want, go ahead, Munia. Okay. In those distribution so, in radiotherapy. Okay. So I think that Floca Gen will four. be will be fine with you Gen for four. the for the medical simulation. I don't know if you are uh, familiar with this uh, this uh, toolkit or not. So David, uh, David, you yeah. should look into Giant Four and look also into uh, Fluka. Fluka is mostly for neutron I'm new. simulation, I'm, but I'm very new to Monte Carlo. You're very new to Monte Carlo. That's not a problem. Um, so just you know, start by searching for Giant Four. Um, you know, and then you should get to the Giant Four documentation page. And then there you will see, you know, you can actually even email the Giant 4 team. Um, like we said, there are a lot of development in medical application in Giant 4. Um, so you should be able to get going very quickly. Okay. I mean, there is a threshold of having to download and install, uh, you know, somewhere either on your own computer or if uh, at the university. They can, they can get it like uh, you know it's, it's a free software like Munia said. So you have to go through that threshold to make it work. But and also there are also some tutorials and often online um, workshop for the Giant Four that you can you can get involved with. Yeah. Through the okay, and you know, send, send, send us an email if you if you are stuck or if you want us to help you further. Okay, you can and, email me. I will, uh, you know, uh, Munia or Christine, anybody else here who has uh, some experience with JM4, and we'll try to get you hooked up with the correct uh, people who can help you. Thank you. Um, Christine, do you want to get 
Indeed, just to go on on that, uh, this is, um, yeah, to try to understand as well in terms of multiphysics, this is maybe what would be interesting as well for David to understand how to apply it, maybe to interfaces and what are the, the different capabilities as well for the, the GN4. I think it's really interesting to see, but as you were speaking about also the with the fluid dynamics uh, temperature, so there are different phenomena as well that you take into account in your, in your model. So how flexible is it? Where, where are the limits? Where are the boundaries as well? of this Ubuntu reactor, because it, I think it, it's wonderful to think in including all type of uh, physics, I mean, for the energy deposition, but beyond as well. So how far beyond can you go? What else can you simulate? For instance, for the fluid, uh, for the fluid dynamics temperature, you have as well some simulation that you can add to get an interpretation of uh, the energy deposition, correct? Munia? So Munia, that's the question for you. Sorry, I can't hear you, Christine. Can you repeat, please? I, I was just mentioning in terms of uh, the simulation. So this Ubuntu reactor, all the different simulation that you did with the GN4. So yeah. you simulate mainly the energy deposition. But yeah. you could, or you go also beyond. You have different parameters as well that you take into account. Like you yeah. were mentioning somewhere, I, I don't remember which slide, uh, uh, the, um, but at this one, for instance, the fluid okay. dynamic temperature, exactly. So it means that you have iteration. So you have at least there, so two phenomena. How many more phenomena could you take into account? For instance, could you have interfaces with, for instance, the cooling with uh, the, the, the zircaloy or any type of... Uh, uh, equipment in a reactor that are needed as well? And, and how far can you, or did you try maybe to look at a global simulation? Because it could be interesting as well to be very detailed. Yeah, exactly. So here we, we use the, the thermal transfer code, uh, I mean the fluid di dynamics temperature for the for the for the calculate the transfer of heat between each uh, each part of the reactor. I mean the bubbles, the column, and the, the walls. And here the geon four is dedicated for the simulation of the particle reaction, uh, including neutron so transport, uh, nuclear reaction, fission and uh, decay events, fission fragments, etc. So you see, this is perfect. So you have already one interface with this. Yeah, yeah, of, yeah. So that's the thing. You may have some orders that you could take into account as well to make a, a very global simulation as well. Yeah, exactly. But the root is decision for. Because then the, the question is indeed how to, or did you think you, you were speaking about the ADS as well? So this is a great application. And then there are for the, the fission, for the plasma, could you think about that or with the spallation? So that could be something as well that you have uh, the capacity as well to model. Yes, yeah, we, we are thinking to model the whole uh, reactor. So first we started uh, by by only one uh, meter uh, cylinder. Yeah, uh, so and then we will uh, go to the whole reactor. Oh uh, my God, for the reactor. Yeah, it's it's really good to think indeed that the two. Yeah. I mean, in the gen four, which is typically for high energy physics, so for the, the simplification towards the nuclear part with all those uh, interactions. So it's, yeah, uh, exactly. it's yeah. really good to have the full range. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like it, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and thanks a lot for all this presentation. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Christine. Thank, thank you so much. What you've been doing is, uh, is a model. Yeah, I'm mean, not only modelization, but your model. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, Munia, could you go to um, the page, um, the PI um, performance? Uh, index of separability. Yeah, perf the performance index and explain to us uh, why uh, the lowest performance index is the best. Be because the when uh, perfect simulation is achieved, if the performance index of separability is e equal to the zero. So for the practice, PI around 10 minus one uh, means that the separation result is uh, re reliable. I mean, we have a good, uh, a good uh, performance. So go to the next so page. So the, perf the, perfect, the perfect performance is, uh, means that PI uh, equals zero. Okay, go to the next so. page, please. Okay. When you compare the different uh, algorithms. So this uh, 0 0.3 um, 
so it's it's the best performance but what does it mean in terms of the actual separability does that mean that you still have some contamination of uh, of uh, gammas in your in your in your neutron and your neutron separated uh, component well, I, in other I words what is the remaining contamination so uh, uh... For for our uh, for our cases, we started by using NTF1 and NTF2. This is this is the put uh, the put algorithm in uh, non-negative tensor factorization is only uh, NTF1 and NTF2. And for the NMF uh, non-negative matrix factorization, for for our cases, we started with NTF1 also gives a good uh, a good performance in terms of separability, but but NTF1 gives uh, much much better. We found that NTF2 uh, the performance index of separability for NTF2 is uh, much better than NTF1. So, uh, and uh, for the characterization and identification of the, the particles, uh, we, 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 we compute in either uh, normalized correlation or uh, power spectral density. All right, so yeah, okay. I think that is clear. Um, but then uh, do you still have some res residual photon contamination of a neutron separated uh, component? I think no. <laughs> Because we calculate the normalized correlation between uh, our estimated independent complement and the pure neutron and pure gamma gamma ray. So. Uh... Okay. Um, could you go to the the um, validation with uh, pi fc? Okay. Yeah. Could you explain a little bit because. Um, um, you you said that um, you said that um, 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 yeah. Try to ask, you know. I don't want to paraphrase you. Could you just explain to us uh, how the validation is done again for with the pi fc? Okay. So before that, here we computed the normalized uh, the uh, signal to interference ratio between uh, uh, for each simulation cases. So for the gene four Garfield plus plus, we we find that uh, only two independent components are dominant: the first one and the second one. And in the case of BFC, we find uh, two independent complements uh, are dominant, the first one and the third one. So for, uh, for, the, for the identification and the characterization of these two, uh, two uh, uh, particles, we, know we, uh, we calculated here the cross normalization uh, function between the first uh, and the second independent complement in the case of geo 4 graphite plus plus, and the first and the fourth independent estimated independent complement in the case of uh, BFC. So here, uh, the, the fig on the top show that uh, the first independent complement in the case of geo 4 graphite plus plus shows a strong correlation with the, the first estimated independent complement uh, in the case of BFC. And the, the same for the, 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 the second one, uh, we find here that the second independent complement, the red line uh, shows a strong correlation with the fourth independent, estimated independent complement in the case of BFC. Okay, um, very good, very good. Other questions or other comments? I mean, I have, a, I have quite a lot for you, but I don't want to dominate the floor. So if other people have a, uh, questions or comments, uh, please uh, step forward. So Munia, could you, so you explain to, to us a little bit, um, you, there is a reactor in Morocco. What is the status of that, the nuclear reactor there, and what is the future of that? Is it a research reactor or? Yeah, it is a two megawatt uh, research reactor. Uh, and uh, dedicated for uh, uh, radio prote protection and the uh, reactor uh, uh, studies. Uh, yeah, it is a nuclear reactor uh, research for. Is it operating now or is it still in production? It's, it's, I think uh, uh, we have or uh, we have with us uh, Dr. Hamza. Well, I think uh, maybe he can. Yeah, Dr. Hamzawi, uh, thank you for 
coming to uh, uh, to this talk. It's uh, really nice to see you again. Um, maybe you have uh, some comments uh, for us about uh, the status of the research reactor in Morocco. Okay, we don't we don't hear him right now. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, Munia, you you have you mentioned Professor Simon Connell from the University of Johannesburg in uh, South Africa. Yeah. And he too has been looking into uh, into uh, um, reactor studies and and development. And you, yeah. I, I I understand you've started some collaboration with him. Could you? So that's like a collaboration between Morocco and South Africa in in in, in this particular area. Yeah, we hope you, we hope yeah. that uh, yeah. I'm still working with the with the Simon's group for the nuclear reactor simulation by using GM4, and uh, we are looking for a collaboration between uh, Morocco uh, and South Africa. Okay, um, could you tell us a little bit what you guys have been doing? And I understand you have some paper uh, coming out together. Could you yeah, explain yeah. a little bit what's going uh, on? Yeah. We have already submitted the one paper right now. Okay. Um, other questions or, or, or other comments? So, Munia, could you, you know, I think you should tell us also a little bit about, in terms of energy needs of Africa, where do you see the development of uh, nuclear reactors? We have, you know, next week, we're going to hear from Marie Chantal, who is here about, uh, um, uh, I think, Marie Chantal, I'm not sure, I, <laughs> maybe I forgot a little bit the topic of your, of your talk next week. Uh, uh, um, um, renewable energies, I believe, yeah? Uh, you should uh, correct me if, if that's wrong. Um, so we have fossil fuel, uh, renewable energies, we have nuclear reactors, Africa has a lot of energy needs. Could you elaborate a little bit, you know, how you see the, the future of, of um, you know, reactor energy contribution to energy needs of Africa? So yeah, the 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 aim the aims of uh, the, this project, I mean, the reactor uh, simulation uh, by using Geom4, is to simulate an open source reactor code that lowers the barrier uh, of participants by universities to get involved in making the understanding of reactor research. So, um, do you think that um, you know? Yeah, maybe this is beyond your, you know, what you have done, but you know you can certainly speculate do you do you um do you think that uh, nuclear reactors can contribute significantly to the energy needs of africa yeah sure um yeah no i mean <laughs> i wish <laughs> but, but but you know i yeah they can contribute but how would they how would they compete with uh, renewable energies and and in fact uh, how much you know, uh, power up to output can can they really can they really contribute and an issue of uh, safety and nuclear proliferation? Have you have you guys in Morocco talked about those things or discussed those things? Uh, uh, me, I don't know the I I don't have uh, more idea about these subjects, but uh, <laughs> okay, I'm deeper in the simula simulation, so <laughs> okay, just just make sure you give us good simulation. That's right. Okay, okay. Um, other questions or other comments? Um, Munia, I have one more question for you. So you talk about the pebble um, quite a bit. Um, if you have a slide or a few slides to tell us a little bit about what exactly are the components of the reactors? What is a, the purpose of a pebble? in a reactor? Uh, here we, we first started by the simulation of a bubble bit reactor. Uh, so 
uh, this is uh, th this part is uh, dedicated for the public video reactor. Uh, uh, it's uh, high uh, temperature, uh, high temperature nuclear reactor. Okay, but why did you cho choose this? Uh, is that for simplicity, or is that because it has some? It, it is all, uh, also for the uh, for the validation. We we need to validate our uh, our uh, simulation uh, simulation data with uh, with other uh, with other uh, 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 with other uh, software like uh, MCNP or Serpent. So we have already the data. That's why we we start uh, we 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 started using this uh, public reactor. But the one in Morocco, is it going to be power based or different reactor? It's a different reactor. We have uh, here a uh, Triga Mark II reactor, PWR. OK. Could you comment a little bit on uh, the differences between the different reactors and advantages or disadvantages of one type versus the other? Yeah, yeah. For our reactor is is, is dedicated for uh, for radio isotope protection and for uh, uh, some uh, some research reactors. So uh, for the for the for the public bead reactor, we choose this one because of uh, inherent safety and also the online refueling and clean the cost of competition. It's good and uh, very 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 advantage for this uh, this reactor. Okay, very good. Um, other questions, other comments? Uh, I think, um, you know, uh, people should talk here. I'd like to hear people. Uh... I have one question. Okay, go ahead, Fabien. Uh, what is uh, in the reactor? Do you, do you have also uh, some inconvenience, some inconvenience, for example, the unstable of the of the whole of the reactor at Morocco, for example, if you have, for example, a, a land who can, who, who can, uh, which, 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 which come and trouble the reactor, is, is will he uh, trouble uh, the work of the reactor, the, the core of the reactor or not, please? Because like you work on the neutrons and neutrons have a higher energy usually. Mm -hmm. Is there no problem, please? Uh, you mean uh, the, the uh, part experimental or part simulation? <laughs> yeah, the operation of a reactor, uh, Munia, what are the dangers and what could go wrong? And I guess maybe that's- Of course, we need, uh, exactly. yeah. It, Sorry, I can't tell you. Yeah, what what could go wrong with an operation of a reactor? There's, uh, you know, the potential of uh, of uh, you know radioactive waste or. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so you know, so maybe, I think yeah. I think for for the reactor instrument the reactor instrumentation has two two objectives. So the first is to allow the optimal exploitation of nuclear uh, of a reactor, including the safety and the security of the reactor core. And the second part, uh, part is to allow after an event or of an accident or equ equipment failure to have a residual uh, information about the state of the core. So that's why we need to uh, to uh, to to monitor on the, uh, the reactor core for the very safety good, part. Good. Yeah. Um, other questions. Um... All right, so I don't see any other questions. So I would like to invite uh, people to who wants to take a picture to. Uh, um... In this case, please, I have another question. From time to time. Okay. Go ahead, Fabien. Please, Prof. I am asking that if the reactor of the Morocco is shut down from some time to some time to some time in order to in order that he. He got the his temp his temperature go down a a few again, please. Both. Um, Munia, the the reactor in Morocco is not yet operational, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's still under development, Fabien. Ah, okay. 
All right, so Munia, you can you can uh, stop sharing, and then now we should take a picture. Okay. Uh, of the participant. All right, so. Um, Uh, people who want to turn on the camera, please go ahead, and uh, and then uh, we, uh, we we will take uh, we'll take the picture. I see some nice uh, Moroccan flag there. Uh, it's uh, Salah, Salah. Very nice, Salah. <laughs> Open your car. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, it's nice to see you, Salah. Hey, so good afternoon, everybody, and yeah. would like first to thank uh, Emir for the nice uh, talk. Yeah. Uh, very good. I, I, uh, oh, this is uh, Professor Hamzawi there, right? Yeah. Okay, very good. It's nice to see you. Nice to see you. Excellent. Mr. Dr. Kativi. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, okay, so I took a few shots. So next week we'll hear from Marie Chantal uh, from uh, uh, um, University of Rwanda. So, uh, I think uh, Marie Chantal, you talk to us about uh, uh, renewable energies, if I understand correctly. Yeah. And, uh, she's, That's true. Yeah, and she's also doing a lot of outreach uh, with uh, women and girls in science. Uh, very, very good work. A lot of uh, ESP alumni are doing fantastic work, and it's really nice to see. And uh, uh, so we look forward to next week. Um, right. So, um, Herman. Uh, is there anything you maybe want to say before we stop? Oh, I, I think there was a very, very nice uh, presentation. I, uh, I learned a great deal and, and I, I am still very elated about uh, uh, Munia's uh, progress and all of her good work. She's going to be a lecturer and I'm very excited about that. Uh, that's, uh, that's just wonderful news. Um, and I look forward to the next, uh, to the next one on Tuesday. Um, I thank you again for putting this together. It's, it's been good to be connected still. And, you know, if we didn't have this uh, Zoom, it's not clear that we'd actually be as close as we are now. But yes. uh, all the science is great and uh, best wishes to everybody. Thank you, Herman. Okay, so Christine, anything you want to say? No, I mean, just exactly like what Herman was saying, it's great because of the continuity as well of all that. Every week, there could be this feuilleton, you know, what is the saga about the ASP? And this is very interesting to see in, since 2010, now all the way for and through all those different schools. So to have unified as well, a lot of different uh, students and university in Africa. I think it's, it's excellent what we're doing and what you are doing, especially in Ketavi with uh, the engagement as well of BNR. This is very important as well. If we could have more as well infrastructure to be able to train more scientists from Africa, it would be just like the key, yeah. But thank right. you for everybody to participate. All right, um, thanks everyone. Munia, please send me um, your slides. Um, um, we will upload it to the agenda page. We will also upload the recording. Okay. And uh, okay. thanks everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Great. So long. Bye.